in the last video I quoted this hymn, but I couldn't remember the words. It's been so long. Uh, so I just wanted to read it to you, and if anything comes out, fine. There is a man in the glory whose life is for me. He's pure and he's holy, triumphant and free. He's wise and he's loving. How tender is he? His life in the glory, my life must be. His life in the glory, my life must be. There's a man in the glory whose life is for me. He overcame Satan and from bondage he's free. In life he is reigning. How kingly he is he. His life in the glory, my life must be. His life in the glory, my life must be. There's a man in the glory whose life is for me, in whom there's no sickness, no weakness has he. He's strong and in vigor. How buoyant is he, his life in the glory, my life may be. His life in the glory, my life may be. There's a man in the glory whose life is for me, his peace is abiding. How patient is he. He's joyful and radiant, expecting to see his life in the glory lived out in me. Uh, this song really encapsulates the essence of the Christian life. It's one of those songs that really gets to the heart of the matter, which is what? Christ is my life. For me to live is Christ. I through the law died to the law that I might live unto God. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, not I, uh, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ in me. And the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I am dead, my life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is my life, shall be manifested, then I shall be manifested with him in glory. Let no one carry you off as spoil through his philosophy and empty deceit, according to the traditions of men and according to the elements of this world and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all rule and authority. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast to what you have and let no one steal your crown. Jesus Christ is our life, and we are looking for that life to be manifested, and we're looking for that person to appear as our life. That's really what it means to um, watch for him and look to him and abide in him and he in you. You are members of the vine and he dwells in you. You've been regenerated if you're born of God, if you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, rose from the dead for your justification, and that you have no way to deal with sin except through his blood, and you know that he is the son of God, and he lives forever, then you have been born of God. And that means that the spirit who is Christ has come to dwell in your spirit. And he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And we are waiting on resurrection every day. We live by resurrection. We live by faith in his life. His life has all the virtue, all the glory, all the power, all the strength, all the attributes that satisfy God to the uttermost. He is the beloved son in whom the father is well pleased. And he's been given to us to be our life so that we can say for me to live as Christ and we live as members of his body. If anything short of that is not the grace of God. Okay, there's been a substitute for the grace of God preached alongside the true message for 2,000 years with a lot of different variants. But if it comes short of showing you that Christ is your life, it's a false message. Even if it tells you how to go to heaven, it doesn't have the Christian life in it. Um, that doesn't mean that it's totally wrong. What Paul said is, you know, You've been moved away from him who called you unto another gospel, which is not another, only there would, are some who would trouble you. It's not really another gospel. It's not a totally different message. It's very much along the lines of the message, but it's devoid of Christ. It's a method of justification apart from Christ, where Christ himself is not presented as your righteousness and your sanctification and your life. 
And Paul said, you know, that he was separated uh, unto the gospel of God concerning his son, who was born according to the flesh, the seed of David, and declared to be the son of God with power by the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. The gospel is concerning a person, Jesus Christ. And we've gotten kind of an adulterated, watered-down version of it, which says, uh, here's how to go to heaven, okay? The goal is heaven, and it's all about you. But God's gospel is concerning his son. And the fact that he's the seed of David means that he's the heir. He's the heir of all the promises, and he has a throne, and he's the son of God in resurrection. His humanity has been uplifted, right? And he is the high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. That was given to the seed of David as a decree from heaven. And all the nations are given to him as an inheritance. And he's going to rule them with a rod of iron. That was given to him as the seed of David. Resurrection was given to him as the seed of David. The mercy, sure mercies of David. God's mercies will not depart from him. He has an everlasting throne. He's alive today because of the covenant God made with him as the seed of David. And he's come to bring us into the same position that he enjoys as an heir by his divinity. As the shepherd, he came forth from the Father to shepherd many sons unto glory. And lay his life down for the sheep. For this reason the Father loves me, because I give my life to the sheep. He didn't just pay a price. He gave you his life. He's given himself for you. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. He is my life. There's a man in the glory whose life is for me. Right? Uh, his life in the glory, my life must be. There is no Christian life apart from this. The Christian not life is not waiting to go to heaven and living ethically while we do, sometimes with the help of the Holy Spirit. The Christian life is the manifestation of Christ in his body. That is the apostolic vision. That is the divine revelation. That is the mystery of God's economy. That's the mystery of Christ. That's what Paul was given to reveal. That was his dispensation of grace for the Gentiles. And again, God's cutting off a branch when those who the truth was given to reject it. Uh, you know, we have to see that Christ is our life. That anything less than that is a substitute and an imitation. People who want law to be the way for you to live before God don't see that Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. They're blind. They don't see it. Uh, it's in the Word. It's readily available. And his sheep will recognize it. If you're his sheep, you're going to recognize this and you're going to say amen. If you say no, that's not true, then I suspect you don't have the Spirit bearing witness concerning the testimony of Christ. And if you say, I've never heard this, but it sounds true, then search the word. Uh, don't just receive it from me, but search the word. Search the scriptures daily to make sure these things are so. Be a Berean. Have a noble mind. Because there's much fewer people speaking this than all the uh, counterfeit uh, corruptions of the gospel that are Christless. And so if you go, well, you know, I'm just going to believe the person, the people who who are the biggest crowd, they're probably right. Well, I'm sorry, that's stupid, and you are a lemming. Um, you need to not believe any of us. You need to <laughs> search the scriptures daily to see if these things are so. The scripture does present law and commandments, right? To to do what? To show you your need for Christ. But how does it present Christ? Is he just a king ruling in the heaven while you're here on earth? It, with some instructions he left on the fridge for you to follow? If you're going to be a good roommate? No. He is the vine and you're a branch. And you've been grafted into him. And apart from him you can do nothing. And he is your life. And he wants to bear his fruit. 
Whose fruit do you think the fruit of the Spirit is? Yours or his? <laughs> it's his fruit through you. And you're not going to bear that fruit if you insulate yourself from him through law and cut yourself off from him and fall short of grace by returning to vomit, by returning to death, by returning to the flesh. So you got to have a vision that Christ is your life. And that's what this song is about. There's a man in the glory whose life is for me. He's pure and he's holy, triumphant and free. He's free. I'm in bondage. He's pure. I'm carnal and defiled. He's holy. I am <laughs> a sinner, right? But his life is for me. He's wise. I'm a fool. He's loving. I'm hateful. How tender is he? Thank God he's tender towards me. His life and the glory of my life must be. I don't want an improved version of my corrupt life. I want his life manifested in me. Anything else is shortchanged. Anything else is short of the goal and the prize of the Christian life. The prize is the wine that comes from his life, from his vineyard. Let him cultivate his life, you know, by bringing you away from everything other than him. And bringing you away from every hope, but having him be your life. A gospel that teaches you that you can go to heaven when you die. But meanwhile, you're here to dance in religion before men and uh, love the enemies of the truth and uh, uh, live by commandments and ordinances and serve the hard taskmaster hoping you'll get a decent wage when you get to the end of the day is a false gospel. Even if it does tell you you're going to heaven, it's not enough. You know, the robe and the, for the prodigal son, he threw the robe on him, the righteousness of Christ, gave him a ring signifying he's an heir, but he would have been starving if he had not been brought into the house and given the fatted calf as a feast. Christ as life in me is what God wants. The food has to get in. It doesn't matter if I just change your position and yet don't fill you within and satisfy you. Changing your position make, gives you a right to be in the house. But only eating the feast satisfies you. Eventually, that's where it gets old. You know, people, the Bible dries up for people because they know they're justified. They know they're forgiven. They know they can go to heaven. But when it comes to their life, the Bible just reads like a book of rules to them rather than a revelation of a person who is their life. The law is the shadow. Christ is the reality. Everything points to him and his life in the glory of my life must be. He is the one in whom the Father is well pleased. He's the one that God wants to manifest. Christ is to be a preeminent and have the first place in all things. And we're to grow in all things into him. Not into something else that's related to him, but it's just a picture. No, I, I want the real thing. These are thieves and robbers ripping you off. Uh, if that's what you're getting. Oh, well, I get to go to heaven. Meanwhile, I'm here with the honor of working for him. And that's why I say so many of my people uh, on my wall, my people... So many, I'm sure, oh, twist his words there. So many of the people on my wall are uh, testify that they're bedridden. And I th always thought, wow, how is it that there are so many people listening to me who are bedridden? They're the ones who seem to appreciate the message most. And they're the ones who are drinking in the most grace. They're the ones who are bearing the most fruit. And maybe you can't see it because you look at them as hopeless. But God is delighting in the fragrances coming out of their heart to him because it's the life of the son of God manifested in them. And that's what we have to have. So anyway, I just wanted to, uh, read this hymn. There's a couple others that I want to do a little later, but, um, I just felt kind of fired up about this hymn real quick. So here's the video about it. <laughs> See ya.